All right, guys, welcome to uh, Option Boot Camp session number four, right? Is this, this is number four, right? Yeah. Okay. Let me go in here and I had it up on, on three. So we're at option number four. All right. Let me go ahead and, and share my screen here. So where we are is, is, is uh, we're going, here's the trades where every week we're learning a different trade. And the first week we learned uh, uh, selling naked puts and then how to turn it into a covered call in the wheel strategy. Uh, the second week we talked about selling naked calls. And by the way, selling naked puts, is that a bullish or bearish trade? Bullish. Bullish. And then we learned to sell naked uh, calls and then we could turn that into uh, the reverse wheel uh, when it turns into a short. Now selling naked calls, is it a bullish or bearish trade? Bearish. Bearish trade. And then we looked at poor man's covered calls, which is buying the 70 Delta call uh, further out in time and then selling the 20 to 30 Delta uh, closer in time. Now, I, I was thinking in my drive back from getting my second COVID vaccine about how to better explain uh, poor man's covered calls. And one of the things I wanted to let you guys know is a covered call, anybody have, know what the delta would be on buying the actual stock? Does anybody know? 100. It's 100. Yeah. So the idea is as Delta gets higher, the closer it is to trading actual stock. So you kind of follow that. So if you got a 30 Delta, you know, it's, it's a further away from trading actual stock. 70 Delta is closer. Owning the actual stock would be 100 Delta. Poor man's covered puts, and that's kind of what we're covering today, which is exactly the opposite of the poor man's covered calls, but it's a bearish strategy. And then next week, we'll cover a neutral strategy, which is selling strangles and straddles, and then um, which is an undefined risk trade. And then we'll show you how to define the risk through iron condors, which is a neutral strategy, but it's a uh, defined risk trade. And then the last one I'll show you is diagonals. Last week I did a, a back test of 2020 doing a double diagonal. And I've not shown you this, Nancy. Nancy's been doing occasionally the, the rolling put diagonal. And now I've kind of incorporated a rolling call diagonal, which a rolling put diagonal is a bullish to neutral. Rolling call diagonal is a bearish to neutral. And in a way, I'm using that to kind of offset some of my beta weighted deltas. So I'll show you a little bit about that when we cover diagonals. And so this is kind of what we've seen in the VIX today. And so if, if a lot of you have kind of felt like, hey, I'm an option seller and this is being real painful, um, what you're experiencing here is some of the um, experience here when it shoots, when when a VIX shoots up here to 32, um, and then it trickled down today to about 28, this is uh, the Dallas traffic jam. Um, this is where all of that premium kind of gets sucked out. So it looks like we're temporarily losing money. And as you see, or paper losses, and as that gets relaxed, you'll see some of that premium start to come in. Now, today's agenda, let's talk about first a uh, question I like to start off with every session is, what have you learned or practiced since we last met? Any key insights, key takeaways between last week and today? Well, I, have, I mean, I've been learning charts. Okay. Watching charts. You've been... Uh, kind of going into the technical uh, analysis again. Yeah, I've been going crazy. Okay, and you've been using and trying to learn how to use Thinkorswim. Yes. Right, okay. Yeah. And I know uh, you come from a Forex background, Brandon, so you kind of like to do some uh, of the day trading type of stuff. Yeah, and, and you've, that's probably the gambler in me. That's the gambler in you. And you've been following some of the warrior trading room kind of stuff and 
and you were telling me uh, some of the $60,000 swings and him giving a, a large portion of it back and that some of the experience with that, right? Oh, yeah. 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 All right. What about the rest of you? What have you learned uh, or practiced since we last met? Does it need to be related to the subjects that we're covering? Uh, yeah, you could stretch it a little bit, but kind of try to make the tie in. I, um, I'm i uh, real intent on getting zero DTE working for me. Okay. And part of that requires a mechanical strategy where I the uh, entry goes in with the uh, stop and the profit target. Right, and the stop the stop is critical because uh, you can really get hosed. Uh, I've read too many stories on that. Sure. So I've got I've got a um, a, a stop limit order that'll uh, get triggered first. The way you, kind of the way you showed me, Dale. Okay. Um, okay. That, that stop limit with a little cushion on it, and then uh, after that, a stop market will get thrown in. And I got it all set up with percentages so that it'll just all, there's no numbers to put in. You just just get the initial credit and bam, you're ready to hit the button. Go. Nice. And so I think I got that defined. I'll be posting it on Tasty Trade for comment and, and you know, people to hash around with. But I ran it by a few top experts and they think it'll work. So I'm so looking forward to that. You're setting stop losses based upon a percentage of, of loss? Uh, no, percentage of initial credit percentage of initial credit so let's and uh so let's say you collect the dollar um yeah what are you toying with in terms of your stop loss at 250 percent which would be two dollars two dollars and fifty cents okay it, it would trigger and then at 300 uh, percent it would uh, put a stop limit in and then if it's if it's really blowing fast past it and goes right through it then it hits a 350 percent which is 350 uh, 3.5 uh, stop loss market, and that that should all work. So you're kind of ma mastering the use of the OCO stop loss on Thinkorswim. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Well, one of the things I've learned is kind of running the double diagonals, and I ran a back test in 2020, and it made um, about fifty-three thousand dollars a year to date. Uh, I do think it. Um, running one contract on both the rolling put diagonal and the rolling call diagonal annualized. And I'll, I'll share the, share the results uh, back testing with you guys at some other, some other date, if you're interested, maybe when we cover diagonals. So what about the rest of you? What have you learned or practiced since we last met? I hate to say this, but I'm still going over the, you know, just the whole concept of a call option. Okay. You know how like in a magician, you practice one trick and you get really good at it and then you can do the rest. Well, I'm just working on this first trick. Okay. All right. Just trying and to get my hands around it exactly. Did it help last time after class? I know that you and I and Brandon stuck around after class and I used, um, I ran through a whole year of using a poor man's covered call with Disney. And I think a few of you kind of, uh, you're kind of like my puppy, your attention span dwined at some point. And I went ahead and finished it. And I called Brandon afterwards and I said, hey, did you know that if you would have bought stock on uh, Disney that you, you picked the underlying Brandon, right? Remember? Yeah. You picked Disney. If you would have actually bought the stock, I believe uh, you would have lost a three grand, but uh, the poor man's covered call was profitable by using it a full year, even though it was, it, it ended the year um, at a lower price than it began the year. Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah. So Bob, did it help at all to visualize it when you kind of saw me putting that on for a year's worth of time? No. No, it didn't? <laughs> all right. No, it didn't. I was, you know, it, it, I got lost right away. Okay. Well, for me to kind of watch it in the simulation and then to watch it running through a full year, you can kind of see the long side, see the short side, check the price, kind of go through the things. 
And actually using that on Thinkorswim, I think helps you to be able to visualize it. All right, what else? What have you learned or practiced since we last met? I, I personally did a lot of poor man's calls uh, in my personal portfolio. Um, I discovered that it's a lot easier to control uh, your wins and losses and you can control your probability of success a lot higher, a lot better. Um, you know, as especially like today, I thought there was since it went down a lot today, there was an opportunity for it to to go up in the future. Um, and if you're in it now, and it, you know, eventually you get that out of one, you're kind of selling premiums just for extra cash, while capitalizing on the uptick if there is an uptick, or you can kind of negate it by being close to being even if it does go down. So I think. The poor man's call is more of a patient play. It's much more like, it's not, you know, you're not going to get rich overnight, but if you are wanting steady gains, be able to control it. I think a poor man's call is a really good strategy. So I employed it personally because I kind of understood a lot better by putting it into practice. It's kind of like baseball. You're not going to hit it out of the park, but you try to get on base every time you get up to bat. And I think having a core uh, that you're bullish on uh, say, depending upon your count size, uh, maybe five core things that you're core bullish on that you could create some poor man's covered calls uh, around a, a one year strategy. And then you could trade around that core. So I, I like to use the poor man's covered calls as kind of part of a core strategy of things that I'm bullish on. So anybody else? Okay, our plan, learn one strategy a week for seven weeks. And my goal is that you'll kind of find your own playing style. So of these seven, you may say, hey, I, uh, I'm more comfortable with this one. But at the end of the day, you'll be able to um, do all seven of them. I believe it was Bruce Lee says, I don't fear the man who knows, uh, who, who practices a thousand kicks one time. I fear the man who who's uh, practiced one kick a thousand times. So I think at the end of the day, we're practicing seven different things, but you'll kind of find one of them or two of them that are kind of your favorites. And I, I think, I hope that some of these find their ways into your real portfolios. Today, we're going to learn about selling poor man's covered puts, which is the bearish strategy. And one of the things I'm always doing is, is looking at my beta weighted deltas, which helps me determine uh, how much bullish or bearish risk that I'm taking. Um, our accountability plan, it, who's in first place in the lead, leaderboard? If the glove don't fit, you must quit. Well, um, OJ took a hit today. And at the beginning of the day, I think you were first or second by the end of the day, then I went to get my COVID vaccine. And, and I thought, you know, it, you should slip down into fourth. But OJ says that he still feels good about it, given some of the other things that he he's put on. First place, James uh, slipped into first place with a balance of 212,476. Alex E uh, slipped into second place at 205,376. Charity, who's joining us uh, virtually, um, is at 199.893. A lot of red in the portfolios today, but I wouldn't be surprised if we don't uh, earn a lot of that back in the next couple of days. Juiceball OJ um, in fourth place at 199.031. Alex G, who's working at the moment until 530. Uh, my nephew, Oki Brock. Um, is in sixth place. Ron, uh, taking a conservative route here, is in seventh place. Nada, who's joining us from Malaysia, um, in eighth place. And TJ, um, Tejas Tommy, is in ninth place. And Brian Hasley is coming up in 10th. So to review, um, somebody explained to me, uh, what, how would you describe a naked put to some lay person that says, Hey, I'm, I hear you're kind of learning about selling naked puts. What exactly is that? Somebody give me a three or four sentence 
definition of how you would explain it to a lay person? You're selling the option to sell a stock at a certain price where the person buying the option believes it'll be below that price and they'll be able to replace it so they can sell it at the higher price when it's worth less and buy it back for less. Okay. So the buyer is kind of like buying insurance against a drop and you're selling it. Buying insurance. Them. You're selling it to the hoping buyer. For hoping for a drop. Well, hoping or you find the premium nice. Well, no, they're buying, hoping for a drop. Yeah, they're buying insurance, hoping for a drop. And you're selling it to them saying, hey, I like the premium. But if it drops, I wouldn't mind owning it at that price. Yeah. Hey, Dale, you have two screens up. You have your, you have your next slide. Oh, up. okay. So it makes well, a big slide. Yeah. Yeah. I think what I'm doing is I'm sharing the, the other, I'll stop the share and I'll share the other screen, but thank you for letting me know that, Bob. So somebody explained to me what, what's a naked call, selling a naked call. Give me a three to four sentence definition to how you would explain that to a lay person. It's the opposite of the prior the one. Opposite, yeah. Okay. Seller, seller, a seller wouldn't mind opening. Um, it, you know, if it, if it got uh, up to that price, you wouldn't mind owning it. Is that the buyer? Are you explaining the buyer or the seller? Seller. If it went up to that price, you wouldn't mind being short at that price. Ah. When you're selling a naked call out of the money, you're saying, hey, if it goes up to that price, I wouldn't mind being short at that price. But until it does, I'll be happy with the premium. Now, what's the person on the other side of that trade doing? They're saying, I'll, I'll buy that lottery ticket. I'll gamble it up. I'm gonna buy the double parlay and you're the bookie going, I'll take that action. Because it's a low probability trade. The buyer is a low probability trade. You as the seller have a high probability trade. When we're doing it at 20 to 30 delta. Somebody take a shot at a three to four sentence definition of a poor man's covered call. One at a time, please. <laughs> I knew it was coming. <laughs> you knew the pregnant pause. That, that's it, it just naturally comes, you know. I knew it was coming. All right. Buy the 70 Delta, sell it a 20 to 30 Delta. Okay. It's to mimic. Uh, In the, it's, it's to mimic what? Uh, to mimic the ownership of stock. And the ability to sell options against it. Your 70 delta call mimics owning the stock. The trade mimics a covered call with less capital requirements, which comes in handy in a smaller account. You could become more diversified. You could have several of them on instead of just one. And all of these the benefit is it has positive theta. So while you wait, you get paid. Questions? Dale, yeah. Dale, what, what if I wanted to trade a poor man's covered call and I wanted to do it using the uh, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday expirations? Uh, how far out would I go to buy my 30 Delta if I'm using weekly expirations? How far out would you go? Um, you could go as far out as you wanted to. Um, uh, if you were trading SPX, which it's huge, I wouldn't go out further than um, a week. Okay. If you're trading um, something else like SPY, it's not nearly as, um, you know, I, I'd go out 30 days. 
You know, a SPY is one tenth the size of SPX. I assume the same logic would work on the whole thing if, yeah. if you're just doing it more often. Same logic could apply, yeah. In fact, that's kind of what I'm doing with the rolling put diagonal and the rolling call diagonal is I'm selling an at the money instead of out of the money. It's a little more risk, considerably more variance. Variance means, you know, you'll have some more dips, but you're also, you're, the Chinese word for crisis is a symbol that means danger and opportunity. And both are going on simultaneously. Like in their culture, they realize that both are going on simultaneously. And that's kind of, and so a lot of these strategies, it's up to you to kind of find your comfort level with risk. And as you put them on in the simulator and you try them out, um, you know, you can decide what it is that you feel most comfortable with. Other questions? Okay, well, as you have them, interrupt me and uh, we'll, we'll take some of them. Um, trades that worked this past week and something may have changed because initially I put this list together at about, oh, I don't know, 11 a.m., you know, and a lot changed between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. So forgive me if this list is no longer uh, relevant, but OJ, it looked like you had... Uh, Snow uh, up 9.45, TQQQ 945, SPLK up 8.70, and Zoom, it looks like you took a bearish position on. It was up 16.30. Um, and the, the snapshot I took uh, was at about 11 o'clock. You, you were still in first place, but you want to talk about any of those trades, anything about how you selected them or, or what your thought process was? Um, just with, you know, what's going on in the market right now with you know, inflation on the rise that um, money was being, uh, you know, technology was being sold off. So taking bearish positions against those uh, was ideal. So that's why I took those. And then later I took profits and I tried to uh, <clears throat> catch it on an upswing. And then I went to work and forgot about watching it and, and it went back down. Okay. So I took a bearish position. I saw an uptick. I wanted to scalp it or make a quick buck off of it. And then I got busy with my day and the market turned on me, went straight down afterwards. Now is TQQ, T triple Q, is that a leveraged instrument? It is a triple leverage uh, of the NASDAQ. Okay. ETF of the NASDAQ, yeah. Okay, so you were bullish on that, which meant you were bearish on the QQQ. Yes. Right. And uh, I know Zoom, it blew out its earnings and it it crashed to the upside. Uh, but you uh, did a poor man's cover uh, put on it as it peaked. Right. So you made money on the on the downside. Is that is that correct? Yeah, I made money on the downside. And I thought it, you know, I thought it was kind of like a fire sale. Um, as in, I feel it's, it's, a, it's a company that will be valued more in the upcoming month during our contest, I think it'll rebound nicely. So I turned around and did a poor man's call on it with like a month out expiration and uh, selling diagonals. I plan on selling diagonals each week or, you know, call each week against that uh, month out. So uh, you were really playing Zoom both ways. Am I correct? Uh, I did today, yes. Okay. I did today and then until I felt like it hit a bottom or I felt the market hit a bottom. Um, we'll see if I'm right or not the next week or so, but I felt it hit a bottom to where I felt like a poor man's covered call was going to be profitable uh, in the next, uh, next, next month or so. Are you using anything in particular to make that decision about whether or not you think something's bottomed or not? I'm um, using a little technical analysis and historical analysis at the same time. Okay. Uh, so I'm using those two factors uh, to kind of, to, to kind of do, and that's why I think I used a poor man's call today in my personal life because I felt like uh, it kind of mimicked last year, uh, I, you know, with the trends and this, the history. And I think that it's, it's reaching um, some resistance at a low point. So I feel it's going to go back up in the next okay. week or two. Yeah. I would invite, and I think, uh, Greg, you kind of like some technical analysis. Am I correct? 
Yeah, I love technical analysis. And I think Brandon Brandon does too, based upon his uh, prior life of in Forex. So any of you guys that want to do a specialty uh, discussion, I'll take a back burner and let you guys uh, lead it at some point uh, for the group on kind of how you use technical analysis. Deal? When would be a good time to do something like that? Uh, well, we've planned on seven weeks. If you guys want to do it in between sessions, we can, or we can just do it on uh, the eighth session. Uh huh. That'd so I'll just let you guys uh, tell me in Slack what your preferences are, and we'll just ask around. And then uh, if I don't hear from you, we'll presume we'll do it like on the eighth session. Looks like James G. I don't believe he or Alex is with us tonight. Am I correct? Are you guys on the call? So James G. Uh, looks like Riot, APHA, and Tilray. I know T Tilray is a, a weed stock. Um, Alex Uzir is in Bank of America, Royal Caribbean, and uh, NCLH, which is a Norwegian cruise line. I believe he probably traded those uh, bullishly. Uh, I've been kind of had some bearish things, but although I'm, I'm, I'm bullish on Bank of America, they're not here to defend themselves or explain their reasoning. So I'll just go ahead and, and move on. Um, in terms of accountability, 50 out of 22 have completed all assignments. And I'd say a chunk of them was as a result of me uh, bugging you today. As in terms of cramming, there were a few of you who were last minute, uh, oh my God, we got to get it on, you know, and a lot of, of you, it was with some apologetic uh, excuse or things that you've, not excuse, but you guys have busy lives, but um, I want to encourage you to continue to complete your assignments, otherwise you, you kind of fall behind. Um, I want to demonstrate today, and this is where the meat of our stuff is for today, is, is poor man's uh, covered puts. And so let me just a second, um, I'm gonna hit escape, stop share here. And just, I'm gonna hit a, do a, a transition here. And um, <coughs> well, forget that. One of the things about poor man's covered puts is it uses options to replace short stock. And you're just seeing one of the screens now, Bob, instead of both, right? Right, correct. Um, it uses less capital than the actual short position. So just like the same advantage of a poor man's covered calls, it, it, it gets, gets you some capital efficiency, which allows you more diversification in small accounts. So in this case, you're buying the 70 delta put further out in time. For example, you know, if I was putting one in, in your contest right now, I might buy um, the June and sell the April. You could also sell the March if you wanted. You can also even go further out and buy the January and sell, um, sell the, the April, March or April. So what you're selling is the 20 to 30 delta put closer in time, either week, weekly or monthly. Weekly, uh, you might actually make some more premium. It requires you to stay on it. Uh, so you'll be busier. So it's kind of that trade off about how much time do you have. It takes advantage of a bearish move while giving some positive theta. So one of the things I wanted to do is to demonstrate a poor man's covered put, and I'll do it in both trade diff and I'll do it in on demand on toss. So we'll get to see an entire year of kind of how, and Bob said, hey, we did that last week and I was still lost. But, you know, the goal is eventually for it to kind of click into that part of your brain uh, where it, it begins to just make sense to you. So uh, I'll put this on in, in my um, 
paper trading a million dollar account. So somebody give me an underlying of uh, a relatively highly liquid. And by liquid, I mean, it's, uh, you know, a big name stock. Uh, Bob, I don't want you to give me one of your your golden penny stocks, you or Brandon <laughs> that, that you're trading, but give me something fairly large, large enough to have options um, that you would be bearish on. <laughs> GameStop. GameStop. <laughs> All right, GME. It's got to go down. It's got it's to go down. Trap. It's um, got to go. Well, but that's what, what you're gambling on. What too, would you? Though. Yep, that's I wouldn't what, do it. I'm, I'm I'm out of GameStop. I already lost the tournament because of GameStop. <laughs> well, you you threw that out. So let's go ahead and complete it. Where? What do you think it's going to top? What? And I know we're playing a kind of guessing game, but you're the technical analysis analyst here what do you what would you say is is the top uh i would have to i actually have to open up my charts i've got charts on it all right 200 you think the top is 200 all right um let's say uh see if we can hold an april 16th i don't want to go too far out in time with this guy so let's say we bought the 200 put that's going to be pretty expensive, my guess. Look at the, they're trading at $110 per contract. You know, so that's real pricey. So let's just see kind of what it's going to run us. Um, and how low do you think it's going to go? Let me look. Don't get too greedy here. Let's kind of pick We're a reasonable about, like, How low this week? Yeah, let's in, in weekly kind of. Uh, we're going to hit the trifecta oh, this, okay, if, it, this week? if it pings it. But by in, in eight days out, what do you think um, the low point would be? I don't think it's going to go down from where it is. I think it's going to take off, yeah. Okay, well, this is Brandon's trade. So let me talk to Brandon then. Uh, what do you think would be its low point eight days from now, Brandon? I actually think, let me see, I'm looking here. There's a lot of resistance at 126. Oh, resistance. Okay, so yeah, so uh, it's to going I mean, down. It, so you, it's not going to go down very far. I don't think. I think it's going to go up. You think it's going to go up? Yeah. Well, I, I thought I, I, I thought my original you question was a bearish, but yeah. but in reality, it should be a bearish stock. I'm well, just saying, but. I would just say stop shooting on yourself. So pick a <laughs> pick a stock that you're bearish. Are, are you if you're not bearish on this one, pick another one or somebody else. Are are you changing your mind and saying you're I'm not, changing my mind? I, right. I'm all, I'm out of GME. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll put one on because I'm bearish on oh. GameStop. So what I would do is I'm not, I'm gonna, I'm going to say that it's peaking out right now. So I'm going to buy one at one. 30. I mean, I'm not, I don't want to go, let's say I'm going to buy a 130 put. You know what? I am so used to using toss that I hold the control button down and I zoom and that's not what this uses. And now I'm kind of trying to zoom back in you know they say it, it's it's kind of body memory right you kind of do things without even thinking about it now it's it's catching up the other way great <laughs> okay. you just crashed crash the plane there i know i just mm -hmm. <laughs> now i've got to slow down <laughs> all right here all right i'm gonna buy the 130, thinking it's kind of, of peaked out. So I'm going to buy the 130, and then I'm going to sell the 100. <clears throat> what delta was the 130 there? Let's see. 130, and what did I pick? I picked the uh, the... March 26th expiration, uh, the 130 Delta in terms of the put was a 32 Delta. Now I know I violated kind of what we normally uh, go through in terms of, of what 
we're buying and what we're selling. Uh, but I didn't, I did also didn't want to go too far out on okay. GameStop because this but is normally, really, normally, normally I'd go further yeah. out and I'd buy something deeper in the money. Uh, let's say what a 70 Delta uh, is going all the way out to. Um, well, everything would change if you went further out in time. Huh? 360. And it cost me $245. Okay, so I'm just gonna say I, I'm I'm violating the principles here, but Brandon threw this out. He then pulled a schizoid on me and completely did a 360 and changed his mind. But I'm gonna go ahead and put it on just because uh, I'm here anyway. Well, I'm telling you not to do it, but you go ahead. Okay. Now you you'd find better uh, pricing if you went further out, right? Uh, it'll be more expensive in terms of oh, the leg Lord. that you're buying in terms of the leg you're buying. So I'm going to put this into, um, a bearish put spread, a bearish put diagonal. Okay. Somebody else give me a bearish trade. Liquid bearish. Boeing. Boeing. B A. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I assume that because planes are going down or something, you think somehow that's going to affect things, right? So, uh, how far out would you, uh, you go? Let's let's. Uh, is it is it a, sh a medium term bearish or longer term bearish? What's your premise? I say uh, it's probably six weeks. Six weeks. All right, six weeks would be uh, a month and a half. So say we buy the april 23rd 70 delta put um, does it matter whether you trade the weekly or the monthly um no it's just kind of how busy uh you want to be and and watch the length of your premise you know if i have 15 of these guys on and i'm trading the weeklies you know something's going to fall through the cracks so how many balls can you juggle so I'm going to hit buy here and that's the 70 Delta. And then I'm going to go here for the March 19th. Um, do you want to sell the weeklies or the monthlies? Uh, let's just do the March 19th here and I'm going to sell uh, the 25 Delta put here. Um, sell. Okay. $10 and 70 cents in daily theta decay. And that's a bearish strategy and I'll click on submit and then those of you who don't know um you know you could go down here and i could create a, a group and call it poor man's covered puts if you haven't done that already poor man's covered puts and i'm going to click on create new group and those of you who haven't mastered trade diff you kind of go back up here it'll enter into your portfolio you click on the three dots next to it and you put it on into poor man's covered puts boom there it there it is and that one costs you how much Dale? Or um let me go down here and look poor man's covered puts um initially um we go and open it up and you could go here into kind of the cost. Uh, it looks like it was about $39. Well, it looks like I, I bought the long leg at 35 and then I sold the short leg for four bucks. So it'd be 35 minus four, which is about $31. Okay. All right, so just out of curiosity, now let me go in here and I'll, somebody wanna help me and write down those two strikes. Um, one of them is a 252.50 expiring April 23rd and a short 210 expiring March 19th. Anybody uh, just shout out somebody who's going to write that down. I got it. Okay. Greg's got it. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that over here and let, let's set that trade up. 
All right, so it's on Boeing. So go ahead and give me those strikes now. Yeah, you went to 223. On, yeah. on in April? Um, I thought I saw 223. Maybe I better turn my lights on. All right. 423. Okay, I'm, I'm going to give it to you again. We're buying the 25250 expiring April 23rd, and we're selling the 210 expiring March 19th. You got it written down? Correct. Okay. All right. So now give me those uh, two trades again. You're buying 252.50, Okay. On March 23rd, two, what's the price again? 252.50. 252.50. Okay. So we're buying that guy and uh, we're selling the. 319. On Mar March 12th, 319. No, no 19. 19. 319. Okay, and what's the strike? 210, selling. 210, okay. So now what I'm gonna right click on and click on analyze this trade. And so you can kinda, I can set it up here. And uh, this also always has to be today's date. So March 4th, the expiration of the short side is March 19th. So I'm gonna change this to March 19th. And uh, this trade has a, 56% probability of profit. So what you can do then, see uh, Boeing is currently trading at 224.71. So here, 224.71. So here we are um, and what you're hoping to do, it, see how as, as I move to the left, if Boeing goes down, see how this profitability changes, right? We did, We only did, uh, I don't know how many contracts I did, but you can kind of, if you did 10 contracts, you see it start to go up. Your max profit is 13 grand for 10 contracts. If I just change this to one contract, you can start to see my max profit is 12.88 per contract, but I'll, I'll hit the max if it hits the 209 strike. So really the maximum profitability is at that short strike. Where's that 1288 show? Oh, down the lower left. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So what you're looking at, see over here, you can see what I'm circling right there. Yeah. That's the price. As I move this around, it shows you kind of what the profitability is. And that's the lower line is today's date. If I closed it at today's date, the upper date is if, if it, if it makes it to that price at expiration. Okay. Who has a question? Did I miss the day when you set up charts? Did I, did you miss the day when you set up charts? No, that's kind of a separate kind of, of thing, uh, but it's with the Analyze tab. I do have a YouTube video on using charts. I think okay. I've shown one to Nancy uh, previously, um, but I think what I'd like to use, and I'm looking at the time here, and we've got about 17 minutes. What I wanna do is, um, somebody give me a long-term bearish trade. And what I want to do is I'll run an on-demand uh, for six months. So somebody give me a, a six-month bearish trade. And we can do this in, say, 2000. Uh, um, you, so you can go back in time here to, uh, let's do this. Wow. We don't see your, I don't see your board anymore, your okay. screen. I'll uh, do a share screen here. Thanks, Bob. I'm going to promote you. Bob got a promotion. Somebody give me a give me a bearish trade. Um, you want to do a what's that? Neo N I O N I O. Okay, you want to do a bearish trade on? God, like, if you go back in time, I don't want you to pick something that's going to screw me. Uh, cause I'd kind of like to show you, um, something that goes over a period of, of time. Although if you go back in time to 2020, um, I went back three years on it. You did. Yeah. All right, let's, let's do it. Let's start in January of 2020. Um, and we'll do, uh, we'll go but back. It's to bearish now. It was bullish, but it's bearish now. 
All right. So you said you want something that was bearish for a longer period of time? Well, I just want you to pick something. You know, I was going to show you kind of how it works. I can't run this into the future. Um, if I could do that, we wouldn't need the class, right? Uh, move over Clio. Right. Um, I don't know that there's... All right, let's uh, let's see what would be something. Well, you that... got you got GME you could do, and that was definitely down. All right, let's let's do a win. Let's let's do a win uh, casinos during, um, you know, let's do it during COVID, right? How about let's just try and say, all right, we're psychic, and uh, COVID gets announced in March. Granted, I. I just kind of want to show you guys how this might work. So I'm going to go and we're starting at February 3rd of last year. And I'm going to let it pre-buffer here. And I'll just kind of show you how this could work. All right. So it's, it's now um, we're going to do uh, win casino. And I'm going to buy the 70 Delta in June, 70 Delta put. So here's a 68 Delta. So I'm gonna buy that. And then I'm gonna sell the February 18th, 30 Delta put. Okay, here's a 28 Delta. So I'm gonna click sell there, okay? So, um, you know, we'll do 10 contracts. Oh, you got to hold your control key down or not for the. No. Oh, I didn't. Yeah, you're right. I didn't do that. Okay. So once again, I'm kind of programmed in. So let's do, let's go out to uh, September and we'll buy 70 Delta, 68 Delta. So we'll buy this guy. And then we're selling um, the February 120. Okay, let me do an analyze tab. I don't think you can use that in terms of the back testing things. So let's uh, go in here, take off the privacy. And I'll reset the performance and to 100,000. And so I'm then gonna hit confirm and send. Okay, it's it. It's in the morning, so uh, it's late at night. So I'm gonna have to change this to 10 a.m. No wonder it's not executing. The market's not open at 10 a.m. It's pre-buffering. That's the one down side. Okay, so it executed. So now, um, all right, so now the short leg, I'm gonna go into time. So turn this to February 21st, February 21st, go, 10 a.m. We're gonna kind of watch this net liquidity and see how it does. Now, you could assume that you have an entire portfolio and some of your stuff is set up bullish and some of your stuff is set up bearish, but, uh, I want you to notice here that, um, so here we are and it's uh, February 21st and I've made $1,530 on win. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll this to the next a monthly expiration, which in this case, it's gonna be March 20th. And I'm gonna roll it to a 30, uh, 25 Delta to the 120. 120 is going to continue March going. 20th. Yep. So it's currently trading at 130. So I'm selling the 120 again and I'm 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 collecting $2.36 in premium, which in this case 10 contracts is $2360. Thank you very much for the premium. And now it's March 20th. So I'm going to roll it again. Now first I got to change the time. 
So this, I'm going to change this to March 20th. So you just roll the one side. Okay. I'm leaving the long leg alone. Yeah. And I'm just rolling the short leg. Um, the long leg is currently holding about $28,000. If it gets too up too much money, I could roll it. Now it's holding $92,000. Let's see what happened to win. Let's look at the price. Win went to, oh my God, $59 a share. Good night. We hit the trifecta, didn't we? 107, 230. So we left some on the table. So let's see. Let's go ahead and, and then we'll create a rolling order. March, we're gonna roll this to April 17th. Looks like we're still getting a 97 cent credit. Okay, March 17th, let's see what the 20 to 30 Delta put is. All right, 50. Okay, so we left some on the table, but this is probably gonna cost us a debit you know, but let's just follow the process. Let's see what happens. Okay, it's costing us $53.98 debit instead of a credit. Okay, we'll follow the process, see what happens. March 17th, so now we'll take it to March, April 17th, April 17th. I'm collecting $170 a day in Theta Decay. A lot of good Theta Decay um, over co over uh, comes a multitude of sins. You could put that in your calendar, Brandon, your motivational trading calendar. <laughs> so here we are at April 17th. Uh, we've lost some money on that one because it looks like it shot up from 50 to 75. Maybe if we didn't pick a year that was like a roller coaster. So now we're going to take the April 17th and I'm going to create a rolling order. And then I'm going to sell um, the May 15th, 30 Delta. Okay, it's 65. You had the 90,000 profit in there. You could have just gotten out if you, you could have. Is that correct? You could have. Uh, but you know me, I kind of say life is one continuous poker game. Do you ever cash out when you're ahead? No. Yeah, me either. <laughs> but you could. Unless I'm about to fall asleep. Yeah. April 24th. Okay. I inadvertently rolled to the weeklies. We'll see what happens. Um, it's still got, I'm, I'm kind of showing a, $1,100 of daily theta decay. That's a lot. And a part of it is probably because VIX is so high because we're going through, you know, VIX is 39. Back, this is in the middle of, uh, you know, you were one week. terror. Yeah, I kind of did that inadvertently. Oh, yeah. I tried it theta, yeah. So now we're up to 98.705. So I'm going to roll this to the monthly soon. Create a rolling order, April 24th. Let's see what the next monthly is. Uh, the monthly would be May 15th. So I'm going to turn it to May 15th. We'll look at May 15th. We'll look at the 20 to 30 delta. Here's a 25. We're rolling it to 65, collecting $3.26. Or roll your date, probably, right? Sometimes on demand does this. Isn't it just moving your date out on the date? Set it to market. Good call. See, that's kind of why I hire you guys. And I hire good talent. May 15th. How come the credit didn't go into your account right away when you, when it went to go off? 
Well, it's because the price is still into the option. I mean, it's kind of like a, you own something, but and then you got like a credit for it. This is kind of if you closed out everything at that moment. So you got to give it time for that theta to kind of do its deal. So here we are coming up uh, May 15th. We're at 99.380, May 15th. So let's roll to June, create rolling order, roll it to June. Next monthly is June 19th. June 19th, let's look at the 25 to 30 delta, uh, 67.50. Collect $3.56. change this to the market. Okay, there we go. And then uh, we'll roll this to June 19th. June so you 19th. enter, then you roll the date. Okay. So see, there's a lot of, of theta in that. And so it's 3527. If you divide it by that by 10, it's basically $352 per contract that you're getting in daily theta decay, uh, which is nice. But part of it is you're in the middle of COVID. So with high VIX, so now, you know, okay, well, we're, we've <laughs> lost money on it. So whose idea was this? June 19th, July 17th. But you kind of, uh, that's the gist of the mechanics of it. And it works best if you follow a premise and the premise is a correct one. Checking the time. We've now been here about an hour. What questions do you guys have? This is, like, this is a losing trade. I want to also, before we go, I want to give everybody um, your assignment. And your assignment is to create two to three poor man's covered puts and to put them into categories. So by the end, uh, you know, and ideally you'll do this and you won't wait till the last minute. And I'd like for you to all have at least one trade in every category that we've learned so far. So then it would be naked puts naked calls, poor man's covered calls. And after you put this trade on, it will be poor man's covered puts. Anybody reach out to me if you guys want me to help you structure a trade. If you want me to look at your trades, I mean, hit me up. I'll take a look at them, let you know, and then uh, put them into categories. And uh, let's meet up on Slack as you guys have questions. Now, what questions do you have? How do you determine which stocks you're going to trade? Mm. Oh, that's a very long answer. Yeah. <clears throat> well, let me show you kind of what I do. So and don't, yeah, don't get in too detailed, but that's yeah. one that I think everybody's like, well, okay, I don't know which one to pick, right? Yeah. Johnny seems to, OJ seems to know what stocks are going to go up or down or has, has a feeling on what they're supposed to be bullish or bearish. And I'm not sure where you get that information. Yeah. Well, well, from the technical trading watching and the it, news. It, it all depends. Here's what I do. I couldn't hear you. You're breaking up, Johnny. Oh, I mean, it all depends on what your strategy is. If you're looking long term or short term, I mean, there are different ways to screen based upon different metrics, but I think that's another conversation for another yeah. day, really. But I tell you, on, like, what you're risk threshold. Mm -hmm. What I do is I make a list of um, things that I'm bullish or bearish on. And, you know, I, and what I do, you, you may say, uh, well, how do you come up with that list? You know, the bullish, a bullish list and a bearish list. Uh, I like to be bullish on things that I believe have a dominant brand. Um, which Warren Buffett would say it's got a big moat, which basically means if, if you paid Warren Buffett what the market cap was, he'd have a hard time competing with them. 
you know, just look at it. You know, everybody is always addicted to their phones. You can't get them off their phones. So why not, you know, buy a product that has a heavy level of addiction? Now, I'm not recommending Marlboro or, you know, so there may be something that's against uh, some of your principles or not. But uh, for me, big moat stocks are Microsoft, Apple, Intel, Disney, Facebook, Nike, Walmart, Costco, Google, Starbucks, Bank of America. You know, you might also look and see what Warren Buffett invests in. Look, break up the uh, Berkshire B. Look at there and look what the stuff that they own. He's a pretty smart guy that's had a pretty good track record. You can look and see what other um, people are trading. You can go on uh, Ameritrade. You can read um, the, the broker reports, right? I'm not sure... Uh, we're getting some feedback from somebody. Do you know where it's coming from? No. No. Okay. Um, broker reports. I'm a fan of Warren Buffett. I like um, stuff that has a high moat. I don't like cult like stocks where the fundamentals don't match. To me, I think Tesla, I got to be honest, I think Tesla is a cult-like following of Elon Musk. You know, it's like yes. he can do no wrong. Uh, you know, he'll go on Twitter and go, the stock's overpriced. You know, I mean, smoking weed, you know, not. Um, but anyway, I, I think it's kind of a cult-like following, and I tend to be bearish on cult-like stuff that doesn't have sound fundamentals. I like things that have good, strong fundamentals. If I picked one fundamental, it's price to earnings growth ratio. PE would be the second one I like in terms of fundamentals. You know, I don't know. Does that answer your question, Brandon? Those are a few things. Yeah, I'm, yeah I know. I know it's a long and it's a whole, whole. But I mean, I've started now, now because I've got a new puppy, I realize how much people spend on their pets. So I become much more open to realize just because every time I turn around, Suzanne's ordering something on Amazon, you know, it's Amazon delivery because there's some new pet product, you know, so I would be much more, but look at things that you buy. You know, yeah, if, I mean, if, is you, if you on the stock market, I don't know. That's yeah, or if you love yeah. Co if you love Costco and you're always shopping at Costco, you know that that would be something that you might consider. And you could stop on Ameritrade and bring up their uh, what the analysts are saying about it, and then you put it on your bullish list. And and whenever it takes a hit, go shopping, go shopping for a bullish position <laughs> when it takes a hit. You'll help them out, huh? What, Go, what about Amazon? I mean, just as a stock. I I cannot in, in in hindsight, Amazon's been a great stock, but it, when I looked at the fundamentals of Amazon, I just couldn't stomach the ratios, the financial ratios. Now they've proven me wrong, but I just tend not to buy things that have, you know, a few hundred PE because. At some point, I want a company that's spilling off cash. You know, think about it, Brandon. If you were buying a air conditioning company, you'd want to know what's my payback? How long is it going to take me in terms of profitability to pay for this customer list that I'm buying? Right. Right. And if it wasn't a reasonable number of years, you wouldn't make that investment. Right. So, you know, how long is it going to take me to buy it to, and, you know, when you look at Amazon, you know, in a PE is a hundred. I don't know. Hey, Dale. Hey, the PE but, is also changed a lot too. Yeah. But that's just me. A lot of you guys are, you know, you, you, you'll make bets on, um, speculative things, but uh, Amazon seems to be taking over the world. So who am I? I just hey, never, I never got on that grandstand. And plus, it's so high priced. It's it's a hard to uh, get in because it's what's Amazon trading at now? Over three thousand. Yeah. <laughs> try try one contract to Amazon and see how much it costs you. <laughs> Greg. Um. 
I've been uh, a little bit in your camp in terms of basics because they make sense that it makes sense. But the more I watch of people like Kathy Wood and stuff that uh, we're going into the psychotic period coming up here in the next five to 10 years of things. Uh, I forget the term she even called it. It's not like exponential anymore. It's like, yeah. it's on it's logarithmic or whatever it is it's crazy if where disruptors disruptors will change the fundamentals and the fundamentals are almost like a thing of the past because maybe. it's Ooh. happening so fast that's that's what i'm maybe about. but that's what people always say when we're near the bubble yeah good point. i mean when we were back in the 90s and they go hey it's everything's changed anything with a dot com at the end of it you just gotta invest in it you know it's well, at some point, some people were left holding the bag. So here's what I'd say. If you're in your 20s to 30s, swing for the fences, baby. If you've got a good job, continue to swing for the fences if that's what you want, how you want to play. At some point, you hit a few uh, and then you start to realize it's kind of like baseball. You want to also have a core that I get on base every time I get up to bat and have a small percentage of things that you swing for the fences on. And maybe you do that. When you're in your mid thirties, in your early forties, you know, and then maybe when you get into your fifties, you want to have some more dividend paying things. Cause you're starting to kind of, you know, just hit singles. Maybe in your fifties, you just want to get on base. And then when you get close to retirement, you're just kind of want it to spill off enough cash to support a good lifestyle. Hey Dan, I got to run. Okay. Thanks Bob. Welcome. All right. See you guys. Hey, Greg, Thanks, guys. And I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording and anybody else who wants to stick around, um, we can take other questions. Thanks, guys.